Section 6 of The Unknown Life of Jesus Christ This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read for you by Chiquito Crasto The Unknown Life of Jesus Christ by Nicholas Notovich Translated by J. H. Connolly and L. Landsberg The Life of St. Isa Part 2. Subsection 6. The white priests and the warriors, who had learned of Isa's discourse to the Shudras, resolved upon his death and sent their servants to find the young teacher and slay him. But Isa, warned by the Shudras of his danger, left by night Jagannath, gained the mountain, and settled in the country of the Gautamides, where the great Buddha Shakyamuni came to the world among a people who worshipped the only and sublime Brahma. 3. When the just Isa had acquired the Pali language, he applied himself to the study of the sacred scrolls of the sutras. 4. After six years of study, Isa, whom the Buddha had elected to spread his holy word, could perfectly expound the sacred scrolls. 5. He then left Nepal and the Himalay mountains descended into the valley of Rajiputan, and directed his steps towards the west, everywhere preaching to the people the supreme perfection attainable by man. 6. And the good he must do to his fellow men, which is the sure means of speedy union with the eternal spirit. He who has recovered his primitive purity, said Isa, shall die with his transgressions forgiven, and have the right to contemplate the majesty of God. 7. When the divine Isa traversed the territories of the pagans, he taught that the adoration of visible gods was contrary to natural law. 8. For to man, said he, it has not been given to see the image of God, and it behooves him not to make for himself a multitude of divinities in the imagined likeness of the eternal. 9. Moreover, it is against human conscience to have less regard for the greatness of divine purity than for animals or works of stone or metal made by the hands of man. 10. The eternal lawgiver is one. There are no other gods than he. He has parted the world with none, nor had he any counsellor. 11. Even as a father shows kindness toward his children, so will God judge men after death, in conformity with his merciful laws. He will never humiliate his child by casting his soul for chastisement into the body of a beast. 12. The heavenly laws, said the Creator through the mouth of Isa, are opposed to the immolation of human sacrifices to a statue or an animal. For I, the God, have sacrificed to man all the animals and all that the world contains. 13. Everything has been sacrificed to man who is directly and intimately united to me, his father. Therefore shall the man be severely judged and punished by my law who causes the sacrifice of my children. 14. Man is not before the eternal judge, as the animal is before man. 15. Therefore I say unto you, leave your idols and perform not ceremonies which separate you from your father and bind you to the priests, from whom heaven has turned away. 16. For it is they who have led you away from the true God, and by superstitions and cruelty perverted the spirit and made you blind to the knowledge of the truth. Subsection 7. 1. The words of Isa spread among the pagans, through whose country he passed, and the inhabitants abandoned their idols. 2. Seeing which, the priests demanded of him, who thus glorified the name of the true God, that he should, in the presence of the people, prove the charges he made against them, and demonstrate the vanity of their idols. 3. And Isa answered them, if your idols, or the animals you worship, really possess the supernatural powers you claim, let them strike me with a thunderbolt before you. 4. Why dost thou not perform a miracle, replied the priests, and let thy God confound ours, if he is greater than they? 5. But Isa said, 
the miracles of our God have been wrought from the first day when the universe was created, and are performed every day and every moment, whoso sees them not is deprived of one of the most beautiful gifts of life. 6. And it is not on inanimate objects of stone, metal, or wood that he will let his anger fall, but on the men who worship them, and who, therefore, for their salvation, must destroy the idols they have made. 7. Even as a stone and a grain of sand which are not before man await patiently their use by him. 8. In like manner, man who is not before God must await in resignation his pleasure for a manifestation of his favor. 9. But woe to you, ye adversaries of men, if it is not the favor you await, but rather the wrath of the Most High, woe to you, if you demand that he attest his power by a miracle. 10. For it is not the idols which he will destroy in his wrath, but those by whom they were created. Their hearts will be the prey of an eternal fire, and their flesh shall be given to the beasts of prey. 11. God will drive away the contaminated animals from his flocks, but will take to himself those who strayed, because they knew not the heavenly part within them. 12. When the pagans saw that the power of their priests was not, they put faith in the words of Isa. Fearing the anger of the true God, they broke their idols to pieces and caused their priests to flee from among them. 13. Isa furthermore taught the pagans that they should not endeavor to see the eternal spirit with their eyes, but to perceive him with their hearts and make themselves worthy of his favors by the purity of their souls. 14. Not only, he said to them, must ye refrain from offering human sacrifices, but ye may not lay on the altar any creature to which life has been given, for all things created are for man. 15. Withhold not from your neighbor his just due, for this would be like stealing from him what he had earned in the sweat of his brow. 16. Deceive none, that ye may not yourselves be deceived. Seek to justify yourselves before the last judgment, for then it will be too late. 17. Be not given to debauchery, for it is a violation of the law of God. 18. That you may attain to supreme bliss, ye may not only purify yourselves, but must also guide others into the path that will enable them to regain their primitive innocence. Subsection 8. The countries round about were filled with the renown of Isa's preachings, and when he came unto Persia, the priests grew afraid and forbade the people hearing him. 2. Nevertheless, the villages received him with joy, and the people hearkened intently to his words, which, being seen by the priests, caused them to order that he should be arrested and brought before their high priest, who asked him. 3. Of what new God dost thou speak? Knowest thou not, unfortunate man that thou art, that Saint Zoroaster is the only just one to whom alone was vouchsafed the honor of receiving revelations from the Most High? 4. By whose command the angels compiled his word in laws for the governance of his people, which were given to Zoroaster in paradise? 5. Who then art thou, who darest to utter blasphemies against our God, and so doubt in the hearts of believers. 6. And Isa said to them, I preach no new God, but our celestial Father, who has existed before the beginning and will exist until after the end. 7. Of him I have spoken to the people, who, even as innocent children, are incapable of comprehending God by their own intelligence or fathoming the sublimity of the Divine Spirit. 8. But as the newborn child in the night recognizes the mother's breast, so your people, held in the darkness of error by your pernicious doctrines and religious ceremonies, have recognized instinctively their father in the father whose prophet I am. 9. The eternal being says to your people, By my mouth, ye shall not adore the sun, for it is but a part of the universe which I have created for man. 10. It rises to warm you during your work, 
it sets to accord to you the rest that I have ordained. 11. To me only ye owe all that ye possess, all that surrounds you, and that is above and below you. 12. But, said the priests, how could the people live according to your rules if they had no teachers? 13. Whereupon Isa answered, So long as they had no priests, they were governed by the natural law and conserved the simplicity of their souls. 14. Their souls were in God, and to commune with the Father, they had not to have recourse to the intermediation of idols or animals of fire, as taught by you. 15. Ye pretend that man must adore the Son, the genie of good and evil. But I say unto you that your doctrine is pernicious. The Son does not act spontaneously, but by the will of the invisible Creator, who has given to it being. 16. Who then caused that this star lights the day, warms man at his work, and vivifies the seeds sown in the ground? 17. The eternal spirit is the soul of everything animate, and you commit a great sin in dividing him into the spirit of evil and the spirit of good, for there is no God other than the God of good. 18. And he, like to the father of a family, does only good to his children, to whom he forgives their transgressions, if they repent of them. 19. And the spirit of evil dwells upon earth, in the hearts of those who turn the children of God away from the right path. Therefore I say unto you, Fear the day of judgment, for God will inflict a terrible chastisement upon all those who have led his children astray, and beguile them with superstition and errors. 21 upon those who have blinded them who saw, who have brought contagion to the well, who have taught the worship of those things which God made to be subject to man, or to aid him in his works. 22. Your doctrine is a fruit of your error in seeking to bring near to you the God of truth, by creating for yourselves false gods. 23. When the Magi heard these words, they feared to themselves do him harm, but at night, when the whole city slept, they brought him outside the walls and left him on the highway in the hope that he would not fail to become the prey of wild beasts. 24. But protected by the Lord our God, St. Isa continued on his way without accident. Subsection 9. 1. Isa, whom the Creator had selected to recall to the worship of the true God, men sunk in sin, was twenty-nine years old when he arrived in the land of Israel. 2. Since the departure therefrom of Isa, the pagans had caused the Israelites to endure more atrocious sufferings than before, and they were filled with despair. 3. Many among them had begun to neglect the laws of their God and those of Mosa, in the hope of winning the favor of their brutal conquerors. 4. But Isa, notwithstanding their unhappy condition, exhorted his countrymen not to despair, because the day of their redemption from the yoke of sin was near, and he himself, by his example, confirmed their faith in the God of their fathers. 5. Children, yield not yourselves to despair, said the celestial father to them through the mouth of Isa, for I have heard your lamentations, and your cries have reached my ears. 6. Weep not, O my beloved sons, for your griefs have touched the heart of your father, and he has forgiven you, as he forgave your ancestors. 7. Forsake not your families to plunge into debauchery. Stain not the nobility of your souls. Adore not idols which cannot but remain deaf to your supplications. 8. Fill my temple with your hope and your patience, and do not adjure the religion of your forefathers, for I have guided them and bestowed upon them of my beneficence. 9. Lift up those who are fallen, feed the hungry, and help the sick, that ye may be altogether pure and just in the day of the last judgment which I prepare for you. 10. The Israelites came in multitudes to listen to Esau's words, and they asked him where they should thank their heavenly Father, since their enemies had demolished their temples and robbed them of their sacred vessels. 11. Esau told them that God cared not for temples erected by human hands, but that human hearts were the true temples of God. 12. Enter into your temple, 
into your heart, illuminate it with good thoughts, with patience, and the unshakable faith which you owe to your father. 13. And your sacred vessels, they are your hands and your eyes. Look to do that which is agreeable to God, for in doing good to your fellow men, you perform a ceremony that embellishes the temple wherein abideth him who has created you. 14. For God has created you in his image, innocent, with pure souls, and hearts filled with kindness, and not made for the planning of evil, but to be the sanctuaries of love and justice. 15. Therefore I say unto you, Soil not your hearts with evil, for in them the eternal being abides. 16. When ye do works of devotion and love, let them be with full hearts, and see that the motives of your actions be not hopes of gain or self-interest. 17. For actions so impelled will not bring you nearer to salvation, but lead to a state of moral degradation wherein theft, lying, and murder pass for generous deeds. End of Part 2 Of The Life of St. Isa Read for you by Chiquito Crasto, Birmingham, Alabama